Thank you for joining us. You have many choices, but we count it a privilege you're listening to the As One Podcast. We truly thank God for you. And as always, we hope you enjoy today's segment. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello out there. Once again, I am Marcus. And I'm Krista. And this is another episode of As One. Thank you all for all of the support so far. Y'all keep it up and hopefully um, we'll continue to be a blessing uh, as as God is just doing what he does. Yes. And uh, we, we're grateful for that. And speaking of grateful, <laughs> I have two wonderful people that are in in our midst right now mm-hmm. we, we we are amongst excellence right now y'all i just i just want to say that um you know uh, we, we want to do something special uh in, in light of memorial day coming up around the corner and uh and so these two ladies they embody so much and and this is going to be a rich episode i'm gonna let y'all know it's gonna be a lot of nuggets like if you, if you like nuggets it's gonna be a lot of nuggets <laughs> in this episode a lot of wisdom share a lot of wisdom them share. Yeah, golden nuggets, chicken nuggets, oh, whatever, yeah. whatever kind of nuggets you like. Denver nuggets. It's going to be all in there, y'all. Um, I have uh, the beautiful Miss Cynthia and the beautiful Miss Wanda Mooney. How y'all doing? Fine. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So, um, you know, we got so much to cover, so I'm I'm going to jump right into it. But thank y'all for, for joining yes. us. Thank you for being uh, gracing us with your presence. Thank um, you for inviting us. Yes, yes. I, I would have been a fool, man. Too. <laughs> so um so we're gonna get rolling so i, I want to start out with this so so for, for the audience sake um this is family Th- these two ladies uh both married into uh my family married my, my uncles um and uh you know both both of my uncles were servicemen um and they were just all around great guys and um you know god has called them home um but they left a lot of legacy just all over the place and these two ladies have Help to carry those legacies on, and uh, they did it in such a way that's just amazing and awesome. Um, so I want to kind of go down memory lane first. So I want to start. I'm gonna start with you here. Um, memory lane. First of all, for Uncle Jeff, uh, you know, you guys were high school sweethearts, right? Is yes. that correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. So what? What, what year? What, when? When did you guys meet? I met your uncle Jeff. In 1973. 1970. So the year was 1973. <laughs> and you you were how you were how now listen, y'all. Look, let me say this first. Understand age ain't nothing but a number. I'm gonna put that out there. Okay. That's all it is. So, you know, so understand uh what they about to tell you is Sylvia is gonna be, you know, shocking for some of y'all. Y'all might not know. You'd be like, she what? How old were you in 1973? 16 you years were 16 old. years old. Oh, <laughs> Lord Jesus. And and there you are, just a stunning 16-year-old, just got just vibrant, just full of life. And then you run into some smooth joker with a big afro. <laughs> well, actually, when I met your Uncle Jeff, um, as the kids say, he looked a hot mess. Oh, <laughs> Lord. He used to have his hair plaited. And these were old plaits under a railroad cap. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, with a jacket on, a jean jacket with the sleeves cut out, and black power fist all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. So he was not at his best. <laughs> but he had on some white Chuck Taylors, okay. so you know that okay. didn't care. Okay, he had the Chucks on. He was doing something with the Chuck. And here he comes storming into your life, and what happened? Um... I- Honestly, I saw him. We went to a bus driving school. Okay. And um, I saw him across a cafeteria. Wow. Uh, and said to my cousin, I see my husband. Uh-oh. Oh, Fireworks. Oh. And, and, and again, he looked a hot mess because she said to me, um, my mother's nickname was Boots. She said, ain't Boots will kill you if you bring him <laughs> home. Um, but I just, I saw his eyes across the room and this wow. is God is my witness. And. I saw his soul. Wow. wow. And wow. I, we didn't speak the whole time we were in bus driving school. All the fellas with him were trying to get my number. And <laughs> I was hoping he would say something. He ignored me the whole time. <laughs> Playing um, it cool. <laughs> and so we, we saw each other for a week. We never saw each other after that because he went to Ashbrook. I went to East Gaston. And I was visiting a friend of mine in Stanley, North Carolina, who had, had, been, had, had been sick. And was coming to get in my car, and his 
house uh, was on the street. So mm-hmm. I had to back into uh, the street to get uh, to head home. And my car had a flat tire. Oh, man. So I'm standing there. My friend is is a guy friend. He's sick. He can't come out and help me. And we didn't have cell phones back then. Right. So I'm getting ready to go in the house to use the phone to call to get some help. And I hear a Volkswagen going by. And you know how you just kind of look up because a Volkswagen has a very distinct sound. Yeah, they loud, (laughs) y'all. And um, the, the car went by. And when it went by, I said, Man, if I didn't know any better, that looked like the guy from bus driving school. Yeah. Didn't think a whole lot of it. Was going into the house, heard the Volkswagen coming back, and who gets out? <laughs> but yeah, he's with his friend Keith Gullick, but they, he gets out and, uh, you need some help with that tire? <laughs> <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Um, he fixed the tire and he followed me and he said, well, I probably need to follow you home to make sure, you know, the yeah. tire holds up. Of course, of course. But what the blessing thing. is, is that Keith's cousin had given him directions to my house. Okay. And they were wrong. <laughs> so if if he, if she had given him the real directions, we wouldn't have found each other. Wow. But she gave him the wrong directions, and I was out there with a flat tire, and, look and at he it. saw me. That's crazy. And so I was like, I told you that was my husband. <laughs> God, for God worked that thing out, God and he knows. followed me home to make sure the tire held up. And like they say, the rest is He's he been following you home. He's been following me home. <laughs> wow. wow. But thank goodness that she gave him the wrong direction because we would have never seen each other. That is crazy. And she knew exactly how to get to my house because she used to hang out with my brother. So Nice. Wow. So I, I said, the, now your story was a little different. Y'all met a little, little bit later. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so tell us about, uh, you know, that time. It was the year was. The year was 1995. 95. Yes. 95. So, uh, yeah, 1995. And you were how old? I had just turned 30. So you just turned wow. 30. So you like, Lord, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Lord. I've been I've been out oh, here. Yes. Literally, I was praying. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Lord. Now, you know, now if my tie need to go flat, Lord, you know, whatever need to happen, just bring him, Lord. Yes. Well, actually, uh, that summer, my niece worked for Jonathan Mark. Okay. So he saw my dad picking her up. Yeah. And he made the connection. Wow. So wow. he... Um, Ask, well, first she said he wanted my number, and I said, well, ask him two questions for me, because I've prayed specific, yes. specifically for someone, and I know what I've asked the Lord to for. Listen, let me All drop. Right. Look, that's a nugget right there. Ladies, <laughs> know what you want. Yes. Okay, because yes, sure. if you don't know, they don't know. Yes. Right. Everybody can't be guessing. You know, know what you want and, and talk to God. He'll help you. That's yes. good. Yes. That's good. So uh, I said, ask him these two questions. If he says uh, yes to either one of them, don't give him my number. <laughs> so he, he answered the questions correctly and... <laughs> Like I say, we started talking. Wow. Wow. That's phenomenal. Gosh. <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, you know, I just love, love y'all. Like, for yeah. real. Um, her friend, uh, well, not her friend, actually, her cousin. She was my friend. Um, she kind of, you know, is a little bit responsible for mm-hmm. for hooking us up because uh, my wife, yeah. she was uh, <laughs> she she was looking at me and had the nerve to be looking at another guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, the other guy so, was looking at so me. All, all that she needed to see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she asked her cousin, who was also a friend of mine, she asked, she said, uh, I, you know, I'm talking, kind of talking and look, you know, kind of communicating with you two guys. Who should I talk to? And she said, talk to Marcus. He's a good guy, but he's a hopeless romantic. But he's yeah, that's what she said. He's a hopeless romantic. And I said, you know what? She's a good friend because she's right. I am. I, love, I am too, Marcus. I love, love. I, I am too. Love it, y'all. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so hearing those stories that, yeah, I got the butterflies. I love it. Um, so, uh, uh, so let's talk about, you know, we got a lot, lot there, of course, that we could go into. But let's talk about the service aspect, um, because once again, that's a little different in both situations. So when you met Uncle Jeff, this was before he went to service. Mm-hmm. Um, so what branch did he enter into? He went into the Army. Mm-hmm. And when we were dating, we had talked about um, uh, because, you know, I'm from Mount Holly. He's right. from Gastonia. Right. Our families. um you know, we were not academic family. Mm-hmm. And one thing that Jeff 
uh, prided himself in is that he knew he wanted to get and a edu- formal yes. education. Yes. So as we dated, and we didn't have money, either, again, either family. So we had talked about when we married, we were going to get married, you know, our senior, when we graduated, and he was going to go into the Army mm-hmm. so that he had a steady job. Right. And back then, if you went into the Army, when you came out, there was a GI Bill that paid you Wow. To go to school. Wow. And so he knew I can get this is a way for me to give four years of service, Uh be able to have a job that will take care of my wife and my child, Mm -hmm. you know, my children. Right. And then uh, when I get out, I can afford to go to college. So, fellas, y'all listen. Have a plan. Have a plan. Okay. Have a plan. Mm-hmm. That woman deserves for you to have yes. a direction, a purpose. Mm-hmm. We called it a vision. Yes. Understand where you're going. And then I'll say this real quick, too, before I, I let you finish. I said, I mean, um, I Wanda, here's the beauty about what she just said. Unc wanted to make sure that he had an education because at the time mm-hmm. we were not an educational family. Exactly. He single handedly was one of the responsible persons in making sure that going forward, that legacy continued yes. with his kids, with with his nephews and nieces. He made sure that a lot of us respected and, and had a purpose for mm-hmm. our formal education, the value, what, what of, the that value education. of that education. I can remember having great talks with him uh, about education and the mm-hmm. importance of it. So now the generation that came after, we are actually known more so for the academic piece. Now, mm-hmm. a lot of us have gone on and gotten degrees and yeah. stuff like that. So uh, shout out to, to my uncle Jeff on that uh, for that legacy piece. So so keep 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 going there. But, you know, th- that was really why we opted for the service yes. was because of uh, I benefits. mean, that was the benefit. It was no, uh, you know, this may not be the best thing to say, but it was not love my country so much. I'm going to die for it. It right. was, I need to know that I can take care of my family. Right. That was his total motivation. Right. And, um, and that, and so when he went in the service, he took full advantage. And again, as you talk about, know what you want and be willing to do what it takes That's to right. get it. That's right. So he was taking classes while he was in the military. Wow. Um, when he graduated, he had some courses that allowed him to come back to Charlotte, go to CP for a little bit, and then he transferred to UNCC where he got his four-year degree. So, wow, awesome. wow, that is awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Legacy, y'all, I'm telling you, it, it starts with you now, uh, young people, young single people, uh, you know, dating, aspiring to be married, have a plan, have some goals, see God on what to do, and then execute that thing. And uh, the legacy starts today. So, um, you know, I love to hear that. So, I said, there once again, it was a little different. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, you met him after his time in the service, but just read remind us what branch he was in and then what was that like like dating this this military man you know and and then eventually of course ha- you know having kids and raising kids what was that like well yes he was out of service and he was in the marines yes <laughs> <laughs> a marine <laughs> now as far as his time in service he he told a lot of stories about it and everything yes so um but like I can say I can't relate to like Wanda can as far as the his plan. I I know he want he his his intentions were to go to do his time and to come out. And he was very disciplined, he like was. in everything mm-hmm. he did. And mm-hmm. uh, I can remember having talks with him about discipline. You know, just if you're going to do it, you know, do it. <laughs> you know, and and stick with it, stick to itiveness. And I just I love the fact that he that he had that and he instilled that um, in us. Uh, so so you got to a place to where even though you guys you know met a little little later in life, it's like okay, we're we gonna have some babies. Was that a planned thing or was that ooh love just just <laughs> it brought was, it, it was along? Planned because we were older, <laughs> yes. so we didn't have a whole lot of time uh-huh. to kind of wait. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So we got started, and uh, as far as um, service, I think for Jonathan, he wanted Donovan and Lauren to go to college. Yeah. Okay. Not the service route, like mm-hmm. um, 
and everything. That was one of those things that we sat down and talked about. And once again, that that educational piece is instilling in us the next generation. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all, it's important that mm-hmm. you have knowledge, mm-hmm. you know, because knowledge is definitely power, yeah. you know, um, and, and definitely respecting them for, for, you know, what they did with the service, because even though you may be going to get something out of it, it's still a huge mm-hmm. decision to make. And your right? uncle Jeff, did not want his children right. to go yeah. in the service. Yeah. And so it was, this will be my route to making sure that I have done all of the prep work. And, yes. And, and a lot of that prep work was just, again, our parents, that was not something we came mm-hmm. from. Right. So we knew the importance of staying involved in their school and then making sure that you do not only the academics, but the the community service and all the other things that factor into getting uh, um, uh, an opportunity to qualify to get funds, yes, and, you know, yes, just all the all things that. that that we did not have that, but we knew they would need it because yes. he said, "I, you know, I don't want them to have to go that route." Mm-hmm. So. Beautiful, beautiful. Thinking down the road mm-hmm. like that and and setting it up for for your children, that's beautiful. That's Wife, awesome. what you got? I know you got some. I don't. Got some. I don't know if I... Go ahead. I didn't know you got some. Yeah, you do. Go so, ahead. I mean, I do have a couple of questions, but I don't want to ruin the mood. You're not. No, you can't. Yeah. So, uh, my question would be, what was it like finding out that they were sick? Yeah. And you can take yeah. turns. Whoever wants to go first. Yeah. It was... But, you know, for us, Jeff went to, I mean, he was diligent. And, and again, as Marcus keeps mm-hmm. throwing these nuggets in, <laughs> go... And take the time to check on your health. Mm-hmm. So he was very diligent about every year at his birthday. That is when you get your physical. Mm-hmm. Regular physical went in and our doctor said, hmm, something doesn't look right. Your counts are high. Let's let's run a few more tests. So we were really blindsided with him getting mm-hmm. sick because it was just, it's time for me to go get, he went in July to get his physical. Mm-hmm. We were planning to go on vacation in August. Wow. And so it was just, you know, we had mm-hmm. our plans. So you had your regular Everything plans, was re- yeah. schedule. He always went for his annual checkup because they tell you to pick a time yeah. when you remember to go. So he always went right before his birthday. And when the doctor told him that his counts were high, he was like, I want, I want to run some more tests. And, um, and then when the doctor got the test results back, he was a family physician, but again, God is always in there yes. working things out. And the doctor told him, I think this is what's going on, but I need you to go see an oncologist. Um, but go ahead and go on vacation. You know, you mm-hmm. all, because nothing's going to happen between now and August. Right. Go on vacation. Uh, so we knew, but we didn't tell the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And we went on vacation in August. Um, I remember him, we went to the Outer Banks and he said to me, this might be the last time I see the ocean. And I said, no, I said, matter of fact, we're going to come back here, you know, and celebrate this, you know, when, when all this is behind us. But, you know, obviously we didn't get a chance to go back to, Mm -hmm. to, uh, to celebrate that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, he got back here and then just October, we started the process of trying, you know, treatments and that kind of thing. And and so. did the year was you, you remember what year that was? He was diagnosed in nineteen. Let me get it right. I know it was a little bit before I graduated. Yeah, because because I graduated in two thousand, so it was a f- he 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 was diagnosed in ninety. Seven or ninety eight. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I knew it was right around in there because a little bit before yeah. I graduated. Um, so, and then what? What was he? Then you guys were battling with. Well, you know, we had a whole bunch of drama going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but he had, um, you know, he we had actually. Let me back up. This was it was later than that because he was. Um, it was later than that. Parker. It was later yeah, than that. Yeah, because Sharika, all yeah. that had happened. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. then, so then it so was... So Sharika was shot in 99. Yes, that's what was happening when I was right yeah. before I graduated. Sharika, Sharika was shot yes. in 99. And then, so it was, it was two, it was two, closer to 2000, yeah. or right around, right around 2001. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had yeah. to think for a minute because we were... 
um, when Janny, um, you know, when we found out it was like, we just got over one major hurdle. Mm, yes. And now this, but yes, yes, and and I remember that was a, a very challenging time uh, for our family. And um, and you know, like you said, it, w- it was one of those things where you guys ke- kept it pretty private. Uh, so by the time that we found out, um, right, you know, things were, you know, you know, they were pretty close to to the end at that point. Um, and but we didn't pl- know it was going to be the his end, plan because but- he and Jeff Jr. His plan was, I am going to beat this, and then Jeff and I are going to do uh, a documentary right. about the importance of being tested yes, and about Black people registering and, and so that if you're needed to step up and, you know, donate, that, mm-hmm. you know, all this kind of stuff. So that was the plan. And then when, so he was doing treatments, and the plan was he was going to give it himself because he did a stem cell transfer. Mm-hmm. He was going to do it himself. Right. So you can have your stem cells um, withdrawn, and mm-hmm. then you get those healthy cells back. back. Mm-hmm. By the time he was in a position to get a, a transplant, he didn't have enough healthy cells. So okay. that's when we had to go to the family and say, This is what's going yeah, on. Yeah, we need yeah. you guys to be tested to yeah. try to find a donor. Yeah. And then Tamara. Yes. They, they wanted to be a male close to your age, all that. Anyway, long story short, it ended up being Tamara. Yeah. And um, so there was some challenges because as women, we bring things mm-hmm. in our bloodstream it's and different. through our body yeah. that, so it was a lot of adjustments there, but um, that's how we ended up with Tamara because JJ mm-hmm. really wanted to be, yeah. <laughs> to be oh. him. Yeah. And I think that's the crazy thing about, um, you know, the different forms of, of cancers that it's not always, you, you know, you fall out or you have this intense pain or this mm-hmm. intense, like mm-hmm. these things can be happening and you can be going on your mm-hmm. daily, yeah. you know, and, uh, and then, he, yeah, not really. He was running three, four miles, you know, yeah. working out in the gym. I mean, everything was fine. Yeah. He was not sick. And wow. even when he got diagnosed, he wasn't sick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ooh, that's uh, that's just a, a reminder of how we need to take our, our health seriously. Yes, and very we, much we, so. We mm-hmm. Very much so. Making sure that we're doing the right things, uh, you know, to keep ourselves healthy mm-hmm. and uh, and do what we got to do out here, y'all. I mean, that's that's real. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Auntie uh, Cynthia, you know, it, once again, dif- different situation. Right. Um, um, and and that was mess. Up. I always mess up the type, the form of cancer that he had. He had multiple myeloma. Mo- okay, and that's, people that's always what think of the myeloma that the sun and yeah. all that he had a blood cancer. Yes. Okay. Okay. And Uncle Jonathan was diagnosed with lung, lung cancer. cancer. Now, what happened? I mean, you know, once again, she, you know, she said as, as their their story was, you know, going through the motions in life, right. you know, guys going through, you know, normal stuff that people go through, you know, the challenges of life and stuff. And then, you know, tell us a little bit yeah. about what happened. Well, what it is for Jonathan, uh, he worked a very physical job. Yeah. And I think he knew something wasn't quite right, but having young children and sports and stuff, we were trying to get through soccer season and mm-hmm. then up the holidays come around. Now he um, got sick about two weeks before Christmas. And like I say, he had worked that day. He came home, everything seemed fine. And then that night when he woke me up, um, he thought he was having a heart attack. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, we called the paramedics, they rushed him. Now my first thought was this is not good because for him to want me to call the paramedics, this is definitely something's wrong. Right. So um, I could say it, uh, there were, he knew, but there were, it wasn't like he was really sick or anything. He was getting tired. And I could tell like when he would cut the grass, he was taking a few more breaks Mm -hmm. more than usual, Right. but didn't think a whole lot about it because he was older. Right. Right. So he didn't read a whole lot into it. But um, so he, like I said, had that. Um, we got through the holidays and didn't let the children know. We were, the one thing about us, we, with young children, because at the time he was diagnosed, Lauren was just six years old mm-hmm. and Donovan was nine. So um, we just, like I said, kept it amongst ourselves and we're going to the appointments and everything good. The kids were in school, but Donovan picked up on it. He could tell that something wasn't right. So they called me from the office and say, he's, he knows. Yeah. So we went in and we sat. He's always been a sharp fella. Yes. (laughs) I've just noticed that about him, you know, over the years. He's a sharp little fella, man. Well, not not so little. (laughs) He's a sharp fella, though. (laughs) 
So we had to make an adjustment with that and uh, be a little more open and honest. But we didn't want them to think, because first thing you hear when you're young, your parents are sick, your first thought is, I don't want my parents to die. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't tell him how sick he was, but he knew it was cancer. Mm. Uh, Just like say, wanting him to go on with their little lives and to, you know, and and you know with your because I know um you know our, our cousins on your side I wanted you know they were a little older you know mm-hmm. um at that point but having smaller children what was that like having to talk to them about something so serious and try to convey that without you know like you say destroying the very fabric of what their belief mm-hmm. system was and you know and and all of that it was hard because um like i said it was stage four lung cancer Mm. so we knew it was terminal that's the way they presented it at the moment and at the time and uh it was uh like i said a hard conversation to have lauren was too young to really comprehend Mm -hmm. it still didn't matter it still didn't register to her like it did with donovan right so um i tell you looking back and thinking about it now we just went from day to day, knowing that it was going to happen, but not how we were going to deal with it mm-hmm. when it happened. So I know you haven't asked this question, but I didn't even know for myself. But that morning, we started seeing the signs, and I knew that it was, he had probably less than 24 hours to live. Mm-hmm. But when I tell you, start seeing him take those last breaths, and the kids are in the house, and what do you do? Well, for me, I made the decision in that moment to get them out of the house. Yeah. So I called yeah. and I had my sister-in-law because I had younger nieces and nephews that were Donovan and Lauren's age. Yes. But um, before he left, I had them to come in and give him a kiss. At that moment, they still didn't know yeah. because I didn't want to see them to see him taken out of the house. Right. Right. You know, it was just one of those things I was like, I think this would be one of those memories that they would take with them for a long time. Yes. Yes. Um, man. Wow. I can't imagine what that would be like. And uh, anyone that may be going through something like that, um, you know, I, I the strength that you have to have is just beyond me. So I, I know that God can help you through anything. Right. Um, and I would say definitely there. Um, but, you know, I my heart just always just goes to a place because I'm like, wow, um, I'm actually just speechless right now. Well, I know. That's rare. <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's interesting because, you know, as Cynthia has said, our journeys were so different. Mm-hmm. And when you're trying to explain that to small children, the, their innocence yes. and, and the first mm-hmm. thing that they, you know, it's my, are my, are my parents going to die? I had adult, so to speak, children. Um, they were angry. Yeah. They were, you know, yeah. th- because there's a certain innocence with, with children that you can talk to them and try to, assure them Mm -hmm. but when they're older and you know i'm grown you can't so my kids were angry angry at god Mm -hmm. angry at i mean just at everything and jeff jr um he and his dad like i said they were working on a documentary and the plan was you know this is going to be an educational piece so he just went into a zone, and as I'm sure you know, Marcus, yes. as, as an artist, um, and he made a documentary and entered it in the film festival, yes, and I it won that. the best documentary yes. that year. And people were like, how could you? Nobody believed that was his father. Because mm-hmm. they were like, how did you do that? So they had different coping mechanisms. Right. Jeff went into the... I'm just looking at this as a piece of art mm-hmm. and I'm filming and I'm, I'm I'm editing and because that was how he could get through it. Yes. Janie is a daddy's baby. <laughs> uh, yes. And and she regressed to baby, you know, yes. the, the baby girl kinds of things. So yes. she wasn't Lauren, but it was that a, a baby. Yes. Um, and then Juana just was angry at the world. Yeah. yeah. So it's, they they have different journeys, but at the same time, they're all just like you're always going to be 
a child yeah, in I, your I own relate, way. I can that, relate to that because, you know, I'm sure, yeah, I'm with, sure. my, with my dad's situation, mm -hmm. um, I had a little bit of all that, actually. I It was moments where, because I'm the oldest, like I, I had to like jump into responsibility mode. So not necessarily, you know, focus and artist focus, but a focused man mm -hmm. saying, I got to be here for my mom and mm -hmm. my brothers and then do what my dad would want me to do there. But then it was a time frame where I was angry. And even with my faith, I was like, okay, God, when we talked about this, like mm -hmm. I, I really sincerely came to you and asked you to help him get through this. And, and, you know, so you chose to do it a different way. Help me understand, you know? Um, and then the childlike situation, I just start having memories and, and mm -hmm. just, you know, but it, it, once again, I got to say that, that, you know, it came around full circle to the faith piece, um, you know, just thinking about God and God having me to really look at the situation and look at all of the time that we did have yes. and those m moments and memories and then the legacy piece and everything. Um, and then I also thought about y'all. I thought about my cousins. Um, you know, I thought about how brave Donovan was at the funeral and uh, and how mm -hmm. he stood up there and represented for mm -hmm. his dad. Now, I didn't have that in me. I cried like a baby the entire service mm -hmm. of my dad. I couldn't say two words, but just getting past that moment even to say, okay, now we got more business to handle. If my little cousin can stand up there and be brave like that, I can be brave for my mom and do what I need to do to make sure we carry certain things out. Um, you know, it took me back to when I was sitting beside Jenny at the funeral, uh, at the memorial service, and uh, and how she felt a pain that at that time I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But I was sitting in that church and and looking at my dad up there, and I reached right back to that moment when I was sitting beside her, and I understood everything that she was feeling in that moment. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of those things that we don't want to think about, but it, we do face those things. Right. Um, and I'm just commend you all once again uh for your strength um so uh, you know I, I gotta i gotta go here really quickly uh because you know man this is so good i, I just <laughs> can i just can i just yeah. share something yes else? go ahead that one of the things uh and 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 I, I can't speak for cynthia but there is a certain um uh strength that you it just comes from inside. You know what you have to do. Yes. You're not pretending. You're not, you know, you're not in denial. Right. It's like, these are the things I have to do. Um, and when you're grieving, what I, I'm, I'm constantly reminded of is everybody grieves different. Yes. And you mm -hmm. have to allow people to grieve. Yes. Because there's a difference in grieving and depression. Yes. And if you don't allow yourself, so whether it's a, whether it's through the arts, through however you get through it, if you don't grieve, you can't recover. Mm -hmm. And and your faith, you know, my kids were angry. So in, in my oldest daughter used to say, "I don't know Jesus like you do," and so mm -hmm. don't come at me with that stuff right now. Right. I don't want to hear it. But I know that God was watching over them and that he he accepted them in that anger and wherever they were. So I would say to people, because sometimes, especially church folk, yeah, they start guilting you out mm -hmm. about, you know, they in a better place mm -hmm. and there's all this stuff. And it's like you right know, now, but I'm all I with know this right is here. that my husband <laughs> that I've been with since I was 16 years old is right, gone. Right. And the spot beside me in the bed is empty. Right. So, Jesus, we got a whole lot of stuff we know right now. But in the physical, oh, yeah. I'm crying. I'm hurting. So encourage your listeners grieve yes don't 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 get depressed don't hold it in because it's not healthy and that's why i say i can't speak for cynthia because we grieve different right. but please grieve give yourself time to process it mm -hmm. and and you know deal with it um as healthy in the in the most healthiest way possible, meaning if you do need to talk to someone, yes. reach out or, yes. or go to a professional even. Um, if you need to be alone, you know, just make sure that you're doing it in a healthy exactly. space because you don't want to go, like she said, into depression or anything like that or, or harm yourself or anybody else. But you do want to get it out. You do yeah, want to deal do. with it, you know. And um, and to our to our church, I cannot say this enough. There were more people who knew Jesus. That did not help me at all. Wow. Because I was trying to keep my children 
from being angry at Jesus. Right. And they were saying things, and I know that with the best of intentions, mm -hmm. they meant well, but you don't say to a person, they're in a better place. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I just miss my daddy, That's I don't right. care that I just graduated from college and I should be whatever. I miss my daddy. He was supposed to be here. He yes. was supposed to be a part of all this, you know. So I, we just have I, to which, be careful with that yeah. as Christians, that we are mindful of what we say, what we do, and don't. Well, now this been you, you, your daddy been gone this long. Your husband been gone this long. It's time for you to do this. No, it's not. Can we? Can we do this? Can we <laughs> seek God on what to say in those no situations? Right. It's all right. I promise He'll lead you. Well, he, sometimes they'll tell you the Lord told well, you that. You know, the Lord I, ain't told I, you. I, I ain't I, listen, I'm not talking about you putting your philosophy together based on what you think. I'm talking about you actually praying and saying, "Lord, should I say yes. something?" He might tell you. Be quiet. That's silence. That means be quiet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you, you you stepped into a little bit about, you know, as, and just a couple more things here. And, you know, we, we won't keep you too much longer here. But um, I, I want to cover this because, like you say, there's people that's dealing with situations that are similar uh, to what you guys have gone through. So, you know, I think about you in the role that you have to play as a wife, your caretaker, your nourisher. But then you find out that your spouse that, that you love that you're in this thing with, that you're raising children with, they have this terminal illness, and now that role changes. It's still the same thing, but now it intensifies. So what was that shift like, and how did you handle that? Um, it, it, you know, I'd say that I'll bounce okay, it off you yeah. first. Yeah. Well, for me, and it's, um, I, I guess, well, the one thing I didn't say earlier was when we, um, when they decided, uh, the doctors decided that at that point they'd done all they could do they call in hospice. So we uh, were with hospice. And when you go with hospice, you have a team of, you have a doctor. I mean, excuse me. Yeah. You have a nurse, a chaplain, a social worker, and a grief counselor. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in the end, after Jonathan passed, we had a grief counselor mm -hmm. to come in and talk with the children because I feel like at that point, they may have could have opened up with her and said things that they could have said to me and felt comfortable. Right. So, um, like I said, and as far as me personally, I felt like I, because I had parents and I didn't know what it was like to have lost a parent, that part, I wanted to make sure that they were getting what they needed. That's good. And so I uh, felt like the Lord was preparing me because that Black History Month in February, I saw a story about Betty Shabazz and Coretta Scott King. And in that episode or that movie, it talked about counseling. And how um, Coretta Scott King, she had her children to talk with the doctor, but Betty Shabazz was like, no, we don't do that. We take care of our own. And in the end, her daughter's son, you know, ended up, they had issues because they did not get the help they needed. Yes. So uh, I want to make sure that they got what they needed and that moving forward, they could be healthy. And I feel like to this day, when I made that uh, analogy about, letting the kids kiss Jonathan before he left, not letting him see that. That was one of those things that Donovan had a hard time dealing with. Yeah. But now he thanks me for that. Wow. And, you know, the fact that it hurt, but he could understand why I did what I did. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Big, big shoulders, um, you know, have to hold big moments, and, and that's a, a whole lot. So to be able to hold that, you, you had to have some, some big shoulders. Um, I once again, I just yeah, y'all amaze me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like God. I got to look. I ain't doing enough push-ups. I got to get stronger. <laughs> well, we never, you know, we were we went into again. Our children were older, so we yes. we had the conversation with them. We went into it with a we are going to beat this. Yes. So it was um, uh, just from the very beginning. We, we were very much aware of what was going on, but it was, we are going to beat this. And I remember telling my pastor, I felt like I was the opposite of King David. You know, when his son was sick and, and he, you know, was, wouldn't eat and, you know, was yeah. sulking. Yeah. I was the opposite, you know, because when they sat down and told us, we were like, okay, what's, the pl what's our plan? Mm -hmm. And that was, I mean, right. the whole time we were, what's our plan? When I realized that he was leaving and, and, and we were fighting because Jeff said, I'm going to live till I die. Oh, he, I, he, that I am going so. to that live does. till I die. That and speaks. so it was like 
we are in this to to win it. Right. So when I saw him leaving that morning, um, and actually that night when we went to bed, some things happened that I, like you said, Cynthia, I kind of, when I look back now, I, I was like, where's the strength for all this stuff come from? Come from? <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and, and even when he was trying to get me to lay my head on him and I was like joking with him, I yeah. said, no, because then you're going to be, your arm going to be sore because he had a bone cancer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, you're going to be talking about my, you didn't lay your big head on me. I <laughs> my arm would be hurt. And we just joked. Yeah. But he had, a strength and kept pulling me like, come lay over here, lay or put your head right here. And I know now I love to spoon and all yeah. like Marcus is my, my nephew. We love each other. <laughs> and so, and he knew that mm-hmm. and he was doing all those things that wow. he knew I liked because it was like, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Wow. He knew it. I didn't. And so when he passed, I was the opposite of David. I was like, you know, they were like, oh, he's going to be mad. And, 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 and you go tell him, I'm not telling him, you know? And, mm-hmm. and when they told David, he was like, well, let me go get something to eat. It's open, done with now. You yeah. know? For me, I went the other way. Cause for so long I was being positive. Right. And now I was like, I cannot believe he is not here. Mm-hmm. So that was a, that was a pivotal moment for me. And I had to do that. But at the same time, even though my kids were grown, still be their mother. Because yeah. I knew if I fell apart, mm-hmm. that was going to be even worse. Because as adults, kids have the, younger kids have the, the, the almost like the blessing to if you cry, if you do some things, oh, you're little. Right. When you're grown, people don't give you those things right. sometimes. That's and so true. I was like, as their mother, I've got to make sure I'm there for them. And I have to say, God blessed me with some wonderful children because we were like, we will take care of each other. Yes. And my Jeff, Jeff Jr., I said to him one day, I know what your daddy said to you. They, you the man, you're going to have to do this. I said, but let me tell you something. You're not an orphan. <laughs> you have a parent because he was going to be, I'm not going to move to California. I'm not going to yeah. do this. And I was like, no, sir, you will not guilt me into you didn't live your life right. because you had to take care of me. So right. it's a different thing when they're grown, <laughs> yeah. but you still end up trying to, as mama, yeah. <laughs> get them through it. <laughs> and you know what? Shout out to Jeff Jr. Because legacy, that legacy piece, man. Bro, you if, if you get a chance and you're listening to this, man, I I salute you because you took that thing and, and, man, you are making it happen, bro. So keep it up, brother. I'm looking at you. I'm watching you from afar, and I'm being inspired uh, both by Unc through you and, and everything that you're doing mm-hmm. as a man. So keep doing it, bro. Um, so two more questions mm-hmm. real quick, and then we get out of here. So you yeah, have I, one more. I right? do not have any more questions. You don't have yes. any more. And you're done. Okay. All right. So this is the last one, y'all. Yeah. We're gonna wrap I do not it up. have. Thank y'all so <laughs> we, much. We go wrap coming. it up. Yeah. I we, really enjoyed this. Yes. This has been great. So last, last question, and and you know, I'm gonna tug on your heartstrings a little bit as if I hadn't done it enough. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but I, I have to ask. I have to ask this because once again, I love love, and I know there are people who you know just just thinking about things or going through things. Um, but I always think about this, and I've thought about this a couple of times, even with my dad, but I know it's different coming from a space of someone that you that you were in love with. Let's say God changed it up a little bit. He said, look, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to give you a 24-hour period with the person that you love, you miss, you want them back. I, I know you would love to have just at least one more day. Now, here's the thing. You can't just hold them and kiss on them the whole day. Okay? No. That's not part of the plan. Here's the thing. You got to plan the day out. Okay? You got to plan the day out. So just thinking back to what you guys would do and how you like those things. If you had that 24 hours, what would you do? And what is something that you might would say? Well, because Jeff Jr. is a filmmaker, y'all probably guess that we like to go to the movies. Yes. So... And that was one of the big adjustments for me. It took me a long time to go to a movie because I took the kids to the, the grandkids to one. And when we got out early and the older grandkids were in another theater, so we were sitting there and people were coming out and nothing but God kept me in that seat because I wanted to get up and run mm. as I watch young couples, old couples, yeah. people coming out of the movie. And I thought, I'm never going to get to do that yeah. again. So 
I get my movie date in. Yes. <laughs> but we had a movie date while we were on a family outing because we used to love to go to Jaton Park and just pack a lunch and the kids, grandkids, kids, we fly kites and just. No. So I get, I plan a date, but we end up going to the movies before the date. Was nice, <laughs> nice. Any anything you would you would say to him? Just you know, just. Just one more time to say, I love you. Because yes. I always say, I will love him till I die. Because, you know, when you get married, people, yeah. you know, I love you till you die. But I'll love him till the day I die. So and, and I, love I plan to be around a long time. So I love I'd like it. to be I able to say it out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So the, the movies, I'm my movies yeah. love to. So yeah. I like movies. So. <laughs> uh, so I said, dear, you know, same, same thing. You know, when you plan the day out. When you, because you, you know, I, I, I remember going over there watching fights. That's what we always did. <laughs> we were over there. Yep, we did too. And y'all, yep, we was over Uncle Jeff <laughs> two times as well, watching Tyson in particular. We love Tyson. So, but, but this y'all day though. What, what was you do? Well, you know, it's odd you ask that question, and I, when Wanda was making, uh, talking about the movies and stuff. Well, during the summer, the kids would go swimming. But I never would get in the water. I was too ashamed <laughs> to put on a bathing suit. So I don't think would get in the pool with the kids and I'd just be there taking pictures and on the sideline. But if I had to do again or could plan a day, I would plan to a uh, swimming day where we could all do it together. And you would get in that water. I would get in that water. <laughs> 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 I put somebody to take the picture of us all together because I have pictures of them in the water together. Yeah, I'm not in there, so I would do that. It might rain tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle John's like, no, look, look, let her know. I want you to get in. Oh, uh, y'all, yeah. th- this has been phenomenal. Yes. I, once again, we we just thank y'all for your presence, all of the jewels and the, and the nuggets that you've given us. But thank you for the jewels that you are to our families. Um, continue to be the examples that yes. you are, and continue to love the way that you love. Um, thank you for being it. you. Uh, thank you. Make God it bless. easy. God bless. It easy. Look, yeah. don't don't y'all do it. <laughs> don't y'all do it. <laughs> Uh, wife, anything in closing? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. I, I wanted to say thank y'all so much for coming. Um, for a second, I was getting ready to get teary yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is heavy. But um, thank y'all so much. Yes, we appreciate it. Definitely. Well, thank y'all for listening and tuning in. Continue to uh, you know, follow us on all social media, you know, podcasts and platforms mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. And once again, I'm Marcus. And I'm Krista. And this is As One. God bless y'all. God bless. Peace. Mm-hmm.